What is going on guys? Jason from YouTube here talking about my favorite stock. There's no way around it. It's my favorite stock. I, I mean, I'm 45% and the number's actually growing because I bought a good amount of Microvision today. And the last video I made, you know, I start off silly, count, connecting the dots. And I guess this is connecting the dots part two, if you will, that this is just a further explanation of some things that you probably already know, but uh, there's a few things on these lists that I had to be reminded of, or a few of them I just kind of looked up to do a little bit more research on. And so this was originally posted on Reddit by a guy named Jameson Corazon. Uh, I guess that would be Jameson Hart, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not really Spanish fluently, but anyways, uh, as always, it's not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Just some dude on YouTube telling you what I'm seeing, what I'm looking at, and what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So, um, you know, again, we talked about connecting the dots, but I guess these are just reconnecting the dots and talking about some of the things maybe we missed or just need a refresher on. So after the Q4 2020 earnings call that just happened, you know, I think it was a couple weeks ago, and we talked about it. I think I'd, I may have gone live on it right after listening to the call, just kind of debriefing with all of you. And there was no fireside chat afterward. And if you don't know what a fireside is, it's basically uh, a giant conference call of, of you guys just come hang out and listen to these two, three, four, five people talk. You got big people who enter the room. And next thing you know, you got Elon Musk and, and Vlad, the CEO of Robinhood, on the same conference call with thousands and thousands of people listening. And so uh, it's a really, really neat idea. And usually, Microvision has that talk afterward, but this time they did not. And so a lot of thought and presumption would be that ultimately the questions that us average people would ask, that they're not allowed to answer, that they are you know, under legal advisement to basically not answer questions about the buyout and really not to talk about it at all, which is why you, know, you got all of us connecting the dots all around because it's strongly pointing to that but nobody wants to come out and address the 20 million pound elephant in the room because they're not allowed to. And so no fireside chat, that was a big deal. Um, Sumit started using the best in class LIDAR uh, statement more and more and more. And so again, I think that, I think he's doing that not just to promote his own product, but I think he's doing that because that's what other people are saying too. And so I think that's a, a really interesting point there. Um, several Oz, we've talked about her, her before, uh, still hasn't filed a Form 4, which is a pretty big deal. I think there's a, a time window, and I think it's like 90 days that, that they have to do that. And I think we are only like six, you know, not like we, ha we are like 25, 25 days in, so there's still another 65 days there. Um, every time you hear Sumit speak, I mean, it's just, whoo. Uh, this is the one that we talked about last was Yalan Farhi. Um, he retires and yet doesn't sell any shares. And normally, you know, when, when you leave a, a, that high of a position at a company where you own that a large amount of stock, you're selling it. You're, you're parting ways, you're cutting ties, that's it, it's over. I'm selling, I'm leaving. But they held all their shares. And these are the shares that really, the money that kept Microvision in business during the tough years, long before most of us heard, I don't wanna say all of us, but you know, 95% of us heard of it, that's the money that kept this, the company in business back when it was literally, I mean, go back in time just a couple years, uh, not even a couple years, like a year and a half, this thing's trading for pennies, for pennies, you know, 20 cents, 30 cents, 15 cents. And so it was some really big investors that kept this thing afloat for a long time, and again, if there was ever a person who, who could sell their or the sell their shares, it'd be him right now. Hey, I have 15x my money, I'm selling. I'm 20x my money, I'm selling. And yet he's still in it. And I think it's because of the buyout. Um, David Westcore retirement. Again, David Westcore has not sold either. Um, the 50 million that they had to raise. Uh, remember this was probably about a month ago when the, when the stock first took a run. We said, hey, 50 million uh, you know, at the, at the market, and it kind of dropped the price, but that money was raised, I mean, so quick, so quick. And again, they needed that money in order to do the buyout. Again, if you go back, I think it's like the third week of February, so about four or five weeks ago, um, if you go back in time, you'll, you'll see my video where we talk about going into depth, why was that 50 million needed, 
and really they just need operating funds in order to complete a buyout. That's just part of the process. You have to have money in the bank and 50 million is their operating expense that they would need to do that. Uh, you got Ford and Google partnership and recent Microvision directors addition from these two. Again, so you're bringing on people from Ford and Google into your company and it's like, why would you do that? Because maybe there's something much larger at play. Also, fun fact about Ford, it sold its position in another LiDAR company. And so Ford was, was very, very heavily invested in another LiDAR company and they split ties with them. So obviously Ford wants to be in the automotive space. Why would they cancel that? Potential buyout. Uh, BYD post on LinkedIn about we believe in the, in the we believe in microvision. If you don't know who this is, Mr. Kang, uh, you're, you're just gonna have to look him up. I, maybe I'll do a full video on him one day and, and who exactly he is and, and how it relates to microvision. But uh, he's a very prominent, important figure. And I don't think, like there are some very, very loose ties that come over to Waymo, that come over to Google, um, that could link him back to a potential buyout. But I think more than anything, he's probably just an investor, but a very, very smart, well-connected investor. Uh, we've seen lots and lots of job postings and job listings, and we've seen some of those actually get filled. That this is not just hype of, hey, look, we're trying to hire people like, no, okay, we hired this person, take them off the list. Okay, we hired this person, take that person off the list, or take that job resume off the list. And so, again, just super, super exciting stuff for a company that is looking at an acquisition, merger, buyout coming very, very quickly. Uh, you have to have that expanding staff. This what I thought was really interesting, this was something new to me, is that Microvision is not attending CES, which is just a huge tech conference. It's you know the, the, the who's who of, of what's going on in the innovation and tech world, and they're not going. And so for them not to go with where they're at as a company, is, it, it just speaks volumes that they're past that, that they don't need it. That, that that's not the goal anymore. They don't have to show off for anybody. And I, and I compare and contrast that again with knowing that April's coming up and they're supposed to demonstrate and show all this stuff off. But I feel like some of this um, may just be confirming like, look, we're ready to go. And, and maybe the hype from Microvision propels into this Ford Google um, combination to help grow the momentum and help grow the final product of a self-driving Ford vehicle that's EV and powered by Google and self-driving and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so why not capitalize on more and more hype because they know how many people, you know, I'm not a Ford investor. I'm not a Microsoft investor. I'm not a Google investor, but I'm a Microvision investor. And so, you know, hey, maybe I'll buy a Ford with my my proceeds from my Amazon sale. And so I would just kind of say, why not continue to do that uh, into April with the, the sample reveal? And the last thing, and I think this is the biggest thing today. Um, so right market open, um, I should have written down how much it was, but if you have level two, you see, I mean, there was like a red candlestick that took up like the full size of my screen, right? Like just right at market opening, just a, a pure manipulation play of just dumping all, all the shares um, to, to drive the price down. And what they're trying to do is basically those people who are not that well connected. So they're not actively watching uh, a, a channel like mine. They're not actively watching, you know, there's probably four or five YouTubers that Microvision's really on their radar. And all of us are, are pretty small, meaning that we're not having, you know, we're not the 100,000 or million, million view guys or the you know thousand two thousand three thousand of you guys and so there's not this mass flow of information that gets out like to a tesla investor where there's very very big youtubers talking about it and even the reddit community that it's you know wall street bets has swallowed up all of reddit and the microvision community while it's a very uh, educated group and it's a very tight-knit group and it is a growing group that it is not necessarily the most well-known group, that it's not getting mentioned on CNBC or uh, you know Reuters or Motley Fool or one of those things. And so um, I, I think any manipulation that they can still do and push the price down, they're taking advantage of, which 
And the last point, again, we, we referenced the article several times, you know, 10 signs that your company is getting bought out. And one of those big ones is that the CEO is not defending the share price, meaning that no one's coming to rescue and saying, hey, let's let's get our share price back. Hey, let's talk about this. Let's 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 get our, our company pumped back up. And any time you see a, a company stock drop as much as Microvisions has, you would see that CEO come out and he would make statements and he would try to, you know, r- get people to buy back in and, and rest assured and, and do things like that. But Microvision just steady Eddie. And I don't know if they know about our small YouTube community or the small Reddit community or the, the community on StockTwits of, of those of us who've been in it for a while, a while, you know, being, you know, some of us six months, some eight months, 12 months, you know, again, probably only 10% longer than that. <clears throat> but those of us that are in it, we're in it for the long haul, that we didn't sell when it got to 24, we didn't sell when it went down to 14, we're not selling now, and we're just buying more, we're accumulating more because we were looking at this as buyout tickets. And we're starting to use acronyms like AMS after Microvision sells, like that. that's what we're getting to. And so um, it, I think just as, as you look at everything, and, and this list is not comprehensive at all, it's just a list that I saw today and I was like, I'm gonna have to make sure that everybody sees that because I know not everybody's on Reddit. Um, but again, as you connect these dots, and, and I'm, I guess we'll call this connect the, dot, connect the dots part two, and maybe we'll do a, a part three here in a little bit that the buyout is imminent. I told you, I think about six weeks ago, I put a 12 month time frame on it. And then uh, the other day, somebody pressed me on it real hard and I said, before December, I think it'll sell before the end of this calendar year. And I'm very tempted to even move that up to the end of Q3. I haven't yet, but as I look at this, I just think it's it, it's more and more imminent. It's, it's just definitely happening. And uh, I'm excited about it again. If if there's if things go wrong and I am and I am wrong, trust me, I will be uh, eating crow with you. I will I will show you all the shares that I own and how much I paid for them. And it's something that I will again, not that I'll feel good about losing money, but I'll feel good knowing that I trust in my research, I trust in my due diligence, and obviously I, I you know I will miss something or maybe something you know a, a black swan events happen and and changes things but it's something that I am you know 95% sure on and that's just about as sure as I can ever get with a stock and so I, I'm still buying today if tomorrow if the price gets beaten up again I'll be buying it some more tomorrow I had goals this week of kind of diversifying and, and adding in a couple new stocks that I've talked about but Really, when I step back and think about it and when I look at the price of Microvision, it's just the best buy for me right now. And so I have not been buying a lot of new stuff. I have just been you know, sticking with Microvision, especially today when we saw that dip you know, around 10, 11 o'clock. I think it was like 11.30, kind of bottomed it out that I was just buy, buy, buy. And so anyways, that's what I'm doing. Those are the dots that I'm connected. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got a friend who's a Microvision, share this video with them. Let them know, relax, relax, things are going to be okay. All right, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. Trying to get up to 10,000 sooner than later and uh, getting so close so I can almost taste it. I don't know what it tastes like, but I'm looking forward to seeing 10,000 on there. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good day. Have a good week. And I'll see you all in my next video.